Hello, and welcome to Zappily Statement Builder, the tool which lets you extend the capabilities of your e-learning by creating custom XAPI statements without having to write any code yourself. This video is a walkthrough of Zappily Statement Builder for Articulate Storyline. In it, I will demonstrate creating a project, creating a couple of learning activities, and building XAPI statements for these activities. I've already logged into Zappily Statement Builder, which brings me to the build page here. First, I need to create a project. Typically, a project will correspond to a single storyline file. I click Add Project. I type a name for the project. And I click the Create button. A new project appears in my side navigation, and the builder moves into that project for me to start. Next, I need to think about the learning activities, which will be the objects for my XAPI statements. Using just Storyline's built-in XAPI statements, if I publish a Storyline file to TinCan, the statements are pretty basic. Storyline sends a launch statement when the learner starts the course and a completed statement at the end, and an experience statement for every slide, but that's about it. I'm going to demonstrate using Zappily Statement Builder to send a couple statements that Storyline won't send by itself. I'll keep these fairly simple while also showing several Zappily Statement Builder features. First, on a slide I might have an external PDF I want the learner to download and view. First, I'm going to create the object for the statement, so I click New Object. I'm going to type a short ID for the object, in this case starting with 07 as a slide reference and then reference chart. That's the document that the learner is going to look at. For activity type, document is going to make the most sense in this case. Activity description is optional, but I'll put a little more information. A list of common XAPI verbs. Notes will not appear in the XAPI statement, unlike description. Notes are for your own internal use if you might need to write some notes for yourself or a colleague. I'm going to click the Create button, and this object is now available for me to create statements on. Next I click New Statement. This object is only going to get a single statement, but for other activities I might need multiple. I'll do this one in Guided Mode. Guided mode breaks the process down by steps and provides some extra help. For instance, if I try to move forward without selecting a verb, it gives me a reminder. For this document, I'm choosing the verb downloaded. Now I can click next to move on. Downloading this PDF does not have any scoring information, so I don't have any settings to add in here. You will notice, however, that in the output section, the code that's being written for me is expanding. The verb downloaded has been added to the activity information that was already present. I'm going to click Next and move on to the Context section. The Context area allows us to specify much richer information about these learning interactions. For instance, I might want a category context activity for all the reference documents in this project. So I'm going to click the Add under Category, and in this case, I'm going to type reference documents as the activity or category. For activity types, in some of these context activities, course or module might make sense, but for this I'm going to choose none. Activity description and notes work the same way as they did before. I'm going to leave both blank and click create. This category has now been added to the context activities of my statement. I click Next to move on. And finally, I'm in the Extensions section. Extensions allow you to specify even more information about your statement. I'll click to add an extension. Extensions can be added to a statement in three places. In this case, I'm going to choose Activity because this extension is going to describe the activity of downloading the PDF. The idea is going to be file type. With Zappily, if I type a single keyword for the ID, it will treat it as a custom extension, and behind the scenes it will make a complete ID in line with other IDs for this course. 
If I type a standard extension, I can type the full URI for that standard extension. In this case, file type is custom. The value for this file type is PDF. I'll leave notes blank and click Create. You can see that this activity extension has also been added to my statement. At this point, my statement is ready to save. I have an area for additional notes and additional screen information. And you can see that it has built quite a bit of code for us. If I were ready to put this into Storyline, I could simply click the Copy button now. I'm not ready yet. I'm going to create all my statements first. So I'll just go ahead and save the statement, and we'll cover the steps of putting it into Storyline later. For my second example, I'm going to create a new object. Again, I click New Object. I give an activity name starting with the slide reference, so I'll say this is on my slide 19, and I'm going to call it Enter Comments. Looking at the list, I'm going to decide that Interaction is my best choice for activity type, and I'll call this Course Summary Comments, a chance for the learner to enter some comments on the course. Now I click New Statement. For this interaction, I'm going to choose the verb commented. When I click Next, I'm going to use something in the results screen this time. I want the text that the user entered as their comment. I'm going to type in the response field, text box 1, and you'll notice that the code over here is getting a variable. The response area will dynamically get text out of a storyline variable, in this case, the text that the user entered. Commenting is not going to be a scored event, so I'll leave the rest of these fields empty. But you'll notice that I can either choose a number or a storyline variable for all of the score fields, and either a true-false or storyline variable for success and completion. I'll go ahead and mark completion true if the user has entered a comment, but again, I'm not judging success. I'll click Next here. In the last example, we looked at context and extensions, so I'm going to move through these two sections and again save my statement. This completes this demo of building statements. In the next video, we'll look at inserting them into Storyline and publishing.